Hello friends, let's learn about SQL clause uh, processing problems. Uh, so, they, uh, while developing a universe or designing a universe, they, we need to uh, define first uh, data foundation. And so, for that data foundation, we uh, specify different different joints and cardinalities. So, for that, uh, in that data foundation, there may be some cases where it co can cause the problems uh, in the SQL clause. So, that we need to understand here. So, I'll be covering the details about various uh, SQL clause uh, processing problems. Uh, so let's uh, see with this. So determining how the order of the SQL clauses affect the data return. So this this SQL clause, how it is. SQL traps is one thing. Is, uh, SQL traps are an inherent problem in SQL. So these traps are caused by the order in which the elements of the select statement are processed. So it can be uh, various uh, elements in the select statement we put and it can cause the traps. So there are two types of SQL uh, traps, chasm traps and fan traps. So chasm traps is type of join path between the three tables when too many to one join converge on a single table and there is no context in place that separate the converging join path. And fan trap uh, is occurs when a one to many join links a table which in turn um, linked by other uh, one to many join. So basically in a SQL, a select statement processes the select from and where clause first with the exception of aggregation then chasm and fan traps return too many rows unlike that of loops which return too few rows so this traps returns too many rows so we we saw earlier uh, loops that returns too few rows so it is opposite of that loops this chasm and fan uh, traps so how we can detect the chasm traps so we need to uh, like the tool is automatically uh, not providing an option to detect uh, the traps in IDT, but we can use following ways uh, to detect the chasm traps. So we need to analyze the one to many join path in your schema. Uh, use a detect context option from the tool, which examines menu to one join path in schema. So if there is a context like this relationship, then you can specify the context. Add an additional dimension in our detail object to display more information in report. So this is, um, let's see means how we can do this. So, uh, so this is an, a diagrammatic representation where it will show like what is it. So this is, this is one to many and again, many to one. And again, this is one to many. So one, one table is joining to uh, two tables with the many, one to many option, one to many uh, cardinality. So that means this is x as a dimension, y as a measure, and z as a measure. So that will cause an, a problem. So that is nothing but a fan trap. Oh, sorry, it, it was a chasm trap. So how we can resolve the chasm traps? So we can um, like we can um, separate the SQL statement for each measure. Not recommended as it only works with the measures and result in certain and create a context for each fact table. So this is one thing. So we can have multiple SQL statement per major method uh, drawbacks. We can uh, result can be confusing or the query is inefficient. The context method is more useful where we can define a context for each table at many ends, ends of join. And when a query that includes objects from both contexts, as this creates two select statement that are synchronized at runtime in SQDO. So creating context will always follow just times in inverse. Now let's identify the fan trap. So fan trap occurs when there is one too many join to a table that fans out uh, into another one too many join to another table. So if you see x, y, z. So this is one uh, ta table. It is coming one too many, and this again, on this table is again having one too many relationship. So this is dimension. This is measure two, measure y and z. So that will cause a fan trap. So how we can resolve the fan traps? Alter the SQL parameters for the inverse use combination combination of allies and context and avoid fan traps in scenario. So um, alter the SQL method is not recommended as it only works for major objects and may result in efficiency in processing the query. So use a combination of aliases and context. So we can create an aliasing of context. Uh, so let's see means how we can uh, do this aliases and context for this uh, table. We have this B, uh, this P is a table. So for this, we can create an allies. So that means this will go this way. 
and this again will go this way so that will uh, solve the problem uh, of the fan trap so we can specify one context from here and other context is from here so that that way it, it can resolve the fan trap the other method is fan trap avoidances I means we, what we can do specify we can have this dimension and the measures to at uh, the third table only means we will not uh, consider this table of uh, this uh, this uh, second table in the in the query itself so this is an avoidance of the fan trap so that's it uh, about this uh, traps let's uh, i'll be taking the practical examples related to this fan traps and hs traps so we'll will uh, try to explain in a detail uh, practically so which traps are problems in inherent in sql loops and chas traps are detected automatically by idt true or false what can be used to avoid chas traps so fan traps and chas traps are two uh, inherent problem in sql and this is false we cannot detect fan chas uh, and traps uh, automatically and what can be used to avoid chas traps it's, it's just we can use context okay so that's it from this uh, video like my video then please like it please subscribe to my channel as well thank you for watching